Okay, today we're going to be just talking basically about the 3M Cloud. We're kind of going to do a basic 3M Cloud library demo. The first thing we're going to talk about is I'm just going to get some official business out of the way and give you just a little bit of background about the eRead Illinois project and talk about why we're offering the 3M Cloud library and how it came to be that your library is able to use it and your patrons. Uh, that will be pretty quick and then we'll move on to the fun part, which is a tour of the 3M Cloud Library app. Uh, I'll explain what devices it works on and then we'll just take a look at it up close and kind of explain some of the neat features that are available in there uh, and how it works. Uh, it's really easy for your patrons to use and it will be really easy for you to use if you have not been in there before. Um, if you have, hopefully we'll point out a few things that maybe you didn't know that you can do in the app. And then at the end, we'll just take a look at the 3M eBooks in our OPAC. The 3M Cloud Library works really well with Polaris, which means that pretty much anything you can do in the app, you can also do in the OPAC, which is really cool. Uh, so we'll just take a look at that so that you're aware of what they look like, what your patrons are seeing, uh, and what kind of questions your patrons might ask if they come across those, those items in the OPAC. So, uh, it looks like it's time to go ahead and get started, so we will go ahead and do that. Um, first things first, just to get some official business out of the way, the reason that IHLS can offer the 3M Cloud Library to share members is because of the eRead Illinois project. What that project is, is it's a grant-funded project. Uh, the Illinois State Library provided a very generous grant to both IHLS and RAILS to work collaboratively to create more resource sharing and most specifically to expand ebook access in Illinois. So it is a grant that we are sharing with Rails. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a few moments. The main goals of this grant project are again to expand access to ebooks for all Illinois residents across the state, to provide training on ebooks and e-readers to librarians and library staff throughout Illinois, and then also to explore a self-hosted ebook model. That third major goal won't be happening until year two of the grant, uh, and it's, so it's a little bit vague right now, but what that means is that we're going to look into the idea of what would happen if we could create our own ebook platform, or we could create our own place to house digital content uh, that we could then check out to patrons across the state no matter what library they belong to. Uh, some pluses to looking into that kind of model are that we wouldn't have to work with a vendor, so we wouldn't be tied to any vendor specifically. And a lot of times when you have that kind of model, uh, publisher restrictions are not as strict, nor are you forced to kind of deal with them. Uh, you own usually the content that you have once you have it. Um, so again, that's a little bit vague, but it is something we are looking into. It's kind of hopefully the future of ebooks and what libraries are looking into doing to get around publisher restrictions. So it's important to note that it is a part of the official eRead Illinois grant. Um, all of your libraries, I believe, for my participants that are here today have already signed up for the, to participate in the 3M Cloud. Uh, if you know of neighboring libraries uh, that ask you questions, please remind them that you are able to sign up this whole first year of the grant at the beginning of each month, um, and that it is very affordable to sign up. We're still trying to get the word out, because uh, I know several libraries have felt that they probably wouldn't be able to afford it. Um, so it is very affordable and we're allowing you to sign up throughout this whole first year at the beginning of each month. So that is important to note. Um, when we first started the project, we were hoping that we could just do one big ebook platform for the whole state. Uh, through our research, it was quickly apparent that there was no ebook vendor who was willing to work with a consortium that large. Uh, and also, Illinois has a very diverse automa automation landscape. Um, so there was no vendor that was capable of working with that many different ILSs or uh, automation systems through libraries. So it's also important to note that you may hear that we are using two platforms for the th for the eRead Illinois project. IHLS and Share members are using the 3M Cloud Library. We chose the 3M Cloud Library because it integrates seamlessly with Polaris which means it's really easy for you to use and it's also really easy for your patrons to use. Uh, and then Rails and IHLS non-share members are using Baker and Taylor Access 360. The reason that Access 360 was shown 
chosen is because they were the most willing to work with the diverse automation landscape and also libraries that are unautomated. Um, and they were able to kind of offer the best deal as far as working with a consortium of that size for Rails and non-share members. Um, so some things to note is that no matter which platform you're participating in, it costs the same. So libraries and Rails and non-share members are paying the exact same membership fees that you are paying to participate in the 3M Cloud Library. And for all intents and purposes, the collections will be very similar uh, and pretty much the same. So we're trying to put the same content in both collections. Uh, of course, there will be some variances just to based on patron demand once we really get circulating. So there may be items in the in the Rails or non-share member libraries that maybe IHLS share members wouldn't, wouldn't use as much and vice versa. Uh, but we always like to point out that if you do hear that there's a library nearby that's using the other platform or if they're using Access 360, uh, that's because they're probably a non-share or a Rails member, but it's providing the same access to eBooks no matter which platform you're using. Um, so that's why eRead Illinois is a really great project because we've worked to be able to provide that access across Illinois to the best of our ability um, in an affordable manner. So that's pretty much just the background info about the eRead Illinois project. That's kind of our official business that we needed to get through. Does anybody have any questions just about the grant pro program in general uh, or about signing up? If you do, please place those in chat right now um, and we'll try to answer those before we move on. And it doesn't look like anyone's typing. This information has been out there for a while, so most of you are probably pretty familiar with it. Um, so at this time, we'll go ahead and move on into our 3M Cloud Library app demo. Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing our little presentation here. And then I am going to share my screen so we can start looking at the 3M Cloud and our collection. So the first thing that I'm going to show you is this, uh, what 3M calls their patron support website. Uh, the reason that I'm bringing this up is this is just your best first resource to answer any questions that your patrons might have as you start using the 3M cloud. It's also a great place to go if you have questions yourself. Uh, it's a wonderful place to find those answers. Uh, the URL for this website is ebook.3m.com. You'll see that on our checkout procedure handout that we've created, which is on the IHLS website. And I'll be showing you, as we go through the presentation today, I'll be talking about a lot of things we've posted that you are welcome to use. So at the end of our session, I'll be showing you exactly where you can find those. Um, I've been recommending that libraries just bookmark this website on any computers that they feel comfortable bookmarking it on. So at your CERC desk, at your reference desk, even on your public access computers, because you're welcome to point patrons to this website. Uh, and you'll also probably use it a lot to answer questions um, as those questions come up as patrons start using the 3M cloud. Another reason I usually show this website is that your patrons to use the 3M Cloud Library app uh, will need to download the app to whatever device it is that they want to read on. And the app is very compatible with most of the major devices. Uh, but this website, you can see on the left-hand side here, lists all of the apps that are available. So the 3M Cloud Library app will work with iOS devices or your Apple iPads, your iPhones, um, any kind of Apple tablet or e-reading device. There's also an Android app. So if you have an Android phone or a Google tablet, uh, anything that uses the Android operating system, the 3M Cloud Library app will work on. If you have patrons that don't have a reading device uh, yet, but they still want to read ebooks, they are welcome to do so on their PC. That's the app that we'll be looking at today uh, because it's the easiest to share virtually. Um, so patrons that don't have devices but still want to read ebooks are welcome to do so on their laptops or on their desktop computers. There is a Nook app. The Nook app comes with a bit of a caveat. Uh, it only works on the Nook HD, the Nook Color, uh, or the Nook Tablet. When you're using the 3M Cloud Library app, your device does have to have browser capabilities, and it does need to be able to surf the internet. Um, 
older or those legacy Nook e-readers, uh, so those Nooks that are only e-reading devices and don't have browser capabilities, can still um, are still compatible with 3M eBooks, and your, those users who have those types of devices can still check out eBooks from the 3M Cloud Library. Uh, they will just need to download the PC app and then hook up their Nook to their computer with a USB cable and transfer the eBooks to that reader. Um, so if it just, they just have a dedicated reader uh, that doesn't download apps to it, um, for the Nook anyways, they'll still be able to use the 3M Cloud Library, they just have to do that extra step. Then of course there's a Mac app, um, so Mac desktop, MacBook, Mac laptop, uh, those users can also read eBooks on those devices. And then the 3M Cloud Library app is compatible with the Kindle Fire. There is also a little caveat to the Kindle Fire. Um, Amazon will not allow the 3M Cloud Library app to be featured in the Amazon App Store. Um, Amazon is very proprietary with their devices and the types of apps that they want their device users to be using because they would prefer that, that books that are purchased and read on the Kindle Fire are purchased through Amazon. Um, but that doesn't mean that your Kindle Fire users can't use the app. It just means that there's a little bit of a workaround. Uh, if you are on this website in your library, um, and if I were to click on any one of these buttons, it will tell me where I can download the app for my patron. Uh, with the Kindle Fire, when we click on that, um, it actually downloads the PDF of step-by-step -step instructions. We've also created instructions that include screenshots that are on the IHLS website. I think those are a little bit easier to follow. We pretty much took them straight from this document. Um, but those screenshots, I think, really help you kind of navigate if you have the device in front of you and you're helping a patron download the app. What Kindle Fire uh, users need to do is they just have to change a setting on their device that will allow them to download third-party apps or apps that aren't necessarily in the Amazon store. Um, and then they just have to go to a separate website to download the app. Once the app is downloaded to their Kindle Fire, it will work just as well as it would on any other device, um, and they should not have any problems uh, accessing the 3M eBooks. So there's just a little, instead of being that 30 seconds of, oh, I just went to the iTunes store and I clicked the install button and now I can use the app, it takes about three to five minutes to kind of go through these steps on the Kindle Fire. So it does take a little bit longer. Um, also with the Kindle, with Amazon, um, those legacy Amazon devices, those e-reading devices that do not have browser capabilities or do not allow you to download apps, unlike with the Nook, uh, your patrons will not be able to check out 3M eBooks. Again, Amazon is very proprietary with their devices, and the way that they have their digital rights management set up on those tablets is that even if you were to download the PC app and try to sideload 3M eBooks into your Kindle to check out from your library, uh, it probably won't work just because Amazon has those devices uh, more locked than other devices that you can find. Uh, one of the things that the 3M recommends uh, and one of the things that we're recommending also, you tell your patrons if they're upset, if they have a Kindle Paperwhite or one of those legacy Kindle just e-reading devices, um, is that they're welcome to email Amazon or contact Kindle support uh, and just say that they'd really like it if the 3M Cloud Library was compatible with their device. Uh, for now, Amazon's really only working with OverDrive and they have only been working with OverDrive for uh, a few years, but that's basically how OverDrive got compatibility as well. They just had enough users who emailed Amazon and said, we'd really like this, it would make us happy uh, that Amazon finally kind of allowed that compatibility to happen. So that's an important thing to note too. Um, Amazon and 3M, I think, are open to negotiations, it's just that they've never been able to come to a consensus about allowing the 3M Cloud Library app in the Amazon store. Uh, so if that ever does happen and it is suddenly incompatible, of course, we would let everyone know. Another great thing I like to point out about this website before we move on to the app uh, is all of the information that's here. Um, under this support tab, you'll find some really great facts. Uh, these are great to point patrons to, especially the device-specific facts, because they'll help them answer questions about basic download, um, and even if they might be having issues with a certain app or, or uninstalling the app or 
anything like that. Um, so a lot of times I pull this up in the office when I'm answering questions for, for library staff members. Uh, and I know that a lot of library staff members pull this up as well. Um, just because the questions, most of your basic questions are probably going to be included here. And then also under the support tab, you'll notice on the right hand side, there are some great videos. So if you help a patron in the library and think that they might not use the 3M Cloud Library app again uh, soon, or they might forget some of the steps that you've gone over, these videos are a great place to point them just because they're very short, they're very instructional, and they will go over all of the steps that you did uh, in the library. So they're great to know that they're there as a refresher course. Um, so again, this is the URL for this website is ebook.3m.com, and I think this is probably your first best resource to answer basic patron questions as they start using the 3M Cloud Library. Um, as we take a look at the app, I'll come up with a few of the questions that your patrons may have already asked you or will be asking, um, because we kind of already know what they are, because it is so easy to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at the app. Once your patron has downloaded the app to whatever device they're reading on, it will show up on their home page usually, uh, or wherever their apps are listed. And you can see it just says 3M Cloud Library. It's pretty easy to find. Um, so we'll go ahead and open it up. And this is the first thing that your patrons will see, is this login page. Um, so we're going to go ahead and log into the app so that we can take a little tour of it. The first thing uh, you are asked when you first log in is what state you're in. So we'll select Illinois. And then it's going to ask for your library. And this is the question that most of you have probably already gotten or will be getting for users that have not used the 3M Cloud Library app yet. Um, your individual library will not actually be listed in this list. So patrons at Mount Zion District Library will want to go to the M's and click on Mount Zion District Library, um, but that's not actually where they need to go. Uh, your library is listed, but because it's a consortial collection, we're all listed under that umbrella heading of Illinois Heartland Library System. So that's one of the first things your patrons will ask is, well, I was trying to access the ebooks, but when I try to choose a library, our library isn't listed. Well, you just have to select Illinois Heartland Library System because we're a member of that system, and that's how the books are listed. Uh, that is also on our checkout procedure handout that you're welcome to print off and give to your patrons. Uh, and again, that's on the IHLS website, and at the end of today's session, I will show you where it is located. Um, and then it's going to ask for username. The username is just the barcode that is on your patron's library card. Um, so whatever barcode they use to log into the OPAC uh, or whatever barcode they use to check out materials, that's what they're going to use for their username. We have a little test account, so I'm going to enter that information in now. Uh, and then it's going to ask for your password. The password is just, again, whatever your patron uses to log into the OPAC. So typically that's a PIN, uh, but Polaris also allows patrons to change that PIN to a password if they choose. Um, so whatever they use to log into the OPAC is what should work here. If you have a patron who uses a password uh, and the password doesn't work, then they may, you may need to look up their PIN or reset their PIN and try their PIN. But typically both work. Um, so I'll be using a PIN because I haven't set up a password for my account. Uh, and I think most of our patrons probably still have that four-digit PIN, but I do know there are a few that have set up uh, specific passwords so it's easier to remember. Um, and then we are just going to click Login. The really nice thing about the 3M Cloud Library is after your patron does this on their device, and I should mention that they can actually download the app to up to five devices, So, and then they can log into the app on each of those devices, and anything they see on one device, they will then see later on another device. So uh, in the morning, if I'm on my iPad, anything I see on my iPad, I will later, four hours from then, if I'm looking at the app on my iPhone, I will see the same things that I saw between both, and I will be in the same reading position if I'm reading uh, a particular book. But the nice thing is that after your patrons log in on any of their devices to the app, 
uh, they're never going to have to go through those steps again. So the next time that I come to the 3M Cloud Library app on my PC, um, even if it's several hours or several days from now, uh, once I click on the app and open it up, you can see it said that it was logging me in. I didn't have to answer those questions, and I came straight to the front uh, welcome sort of page of the 3M app. So that's really convenient. Your patrons can log out on their devices if they choose. Uh, then they would have to answer those questions every time. But I think most patrons probably do not, will not do that. They'll just log in that one time and then they'll always just access the app uh, already logged in on their device. The first thing your patron will see is this shelves tab. These shelves are just a way for us to feature new items, new materials, uh, materials maybe that even aren't circulating that well to kind of show patrons what's available in the collection at a glance. Uh, your patrons can look through the shelves and see the book covers um, of items that have recently been added. It's mostly what we've been putting on the shelf so far. We did do a little book to film shelf just with the Oscars coming up um, and just to put some new content up there to make sure that there were books available to check out. Uh, if your patron chooses to check out one of these items, if they're browsing this way using the Shelves tab, uh, all they would do is just click on an item. The item brings up a nice info page that shows you the cover of the book, the title of the book, um, and just a lot of the information that you would see in the OPAC. Uh, this book is currently checked out. The reason that I know that is because normally if the book is available you'll see a big green checkout button next to the book. Uh, right now I see a gray button that says add to hold list and if I look at this message below it explains to me that this book is currently checked out by another patron. I can add the book to my hold list and I'll be notified when the book becomes available. Just like with a print item. Um, another way to look at them is to do these little on each shelf there's a show all button and that will give your patron a list um, of the books. You can see that these books we just added on January 24th, so we just added these books on Friday, um, and they are mostly checked out because a lot of them were, were new books and bestsellers, um, and I think a lot of our patrons browse using those shelves. So anything that we put up new usually gets checked out right away. Um, you can see there's one that's available to check out. Um, and then there's a couple more as you look further. We will have an option as we look at some of the other tabs to limit our search to items, only items that are available. Um, and that's kind of nice just to show patrons because you may have patrons that say, well, there's just nothing in here. There's nothing I can check out. Everything's on hold, which isn't necessarily true because we do have, um, I think, over 3,900 titles in our collection now, and it continues to grow each week uh, quite a bit. Um, so it's always nice to kind of show that little little party trick. We will also check out a book here in just a few minutes to show you how that works. Um, but this is just a really nice way for your patrons to browse, and it's the first thing that they're going to see when they log into the app. Um, the second tab up here, this Categories tab, will list all of the items that we have in collection uh, by category. These categories are BISAC categories, so they're the subheadings that major publishers use uh, when they label books, and also that major bookstores, big box bookstores, use to organize their materials. So they're not related to Dewey Decimal categories or Library of Congress categories, um, but it does kind of organize the collection via subheading for your patrons. So this is another way that your patrons can browse. Um, you can see in the upper right-hand corner here, there is a pull-down menu for advanced filter. So with the Categories tab, what you can do is just look at books that are available to check out. So I've marked books that are available to check out um, in my filter, and I am just going to pick Fiction. Just This is a nice, fun little trick to show your patrons if they come to you and say there's nothing to check out. And I'm just going to click on Show All Books instead of going to a specific category. Um, but you can see now... And with the PC app, you always have to, it shows you 25 to start, but you can always load more to go through the list. It'll just show you 25 at a time, and then you can scroll down. Um, but you can see all 25 of these books are available to check out. Um, and I can browse through by title and see which ones are available. Um, so that's kind of nice to know is that you do have that capability within the Categories tab. You also have that capability within the Search tab. Um, and again, if I want to check out a book from one of these categories, 
Uh, I can click on a subheading and, and see all the books that are listed under Family Saga. Um, and then I would just check out this big green checkout button to check out the item. Um, and I will show you that here in just a few moments. And you can always click on the title too to bring up that little info page as well. Uh, the next tab that your patrons might use to browse, or just another way for them to look at the collection, is the search tab. This will allow your patrons to search the collection just like they would in the OPAC. Um, so you can type in a title. You can type in uh, an author. Um, we'll type in an author today for fun. So I'll just search for John Grisham and see what comes up. Uh, and you can see I got a list of uh, books in the collection that were authored by John Grisham. The first three, Sycamore Row, is fairly new and fairly popular, so that's why it's on the it's been already checked out. We do have several copies of Sycamore Row available in the collection, um, but most of them are checked out because it is new and popular. And then I can see that there are some items available to check out. Again, if I had done my advanced filter and done this search and just done available to check out. Uh, and done the search, I would have only seen those four that are available to check out, which is kind of nice. The other option in the advanced filter uh, is that you can include books not in library. Most of your patrons probably aren't going to use that, and it does become a little confusing if you do. But what that means is that means books that are available for us to buy from 3M, but maybe we haven't added them to the collection yet. Uh, so if you have that filter turned on as you're searching or under the categories tab, you'll see every book that John Grisham has written that 3M has available for us to buy. Um, so, and some of these are a little bit older or just haven't been purchased yet. Um, so what you'll see instead of a checkout button or an add to hold list button is an add to wish list button. Patrons can add items to their wish list, and basically what that does is it creates a list for us that we can look at, and then that will prompt us. Um, if enough patrons add it to a wish list, then we will purchase that book for the collection, um, is the idea. So the wish list in the 3M Cloud Library is a little different than wish lists in other apps, such as OverDrive. It's not really a wish list that you create of books you'd like to read. Um, it's more a wish list of books that you'd like included in the collection uh, that you would like the library to purchase. Uh, so that's always important to note. I'll go back to books owned by library. Uh, and then real quickly, we'll just take a look at the My Books tab. Right now you can see our My Books tab is pretty empty, but any books that your patron checks out will show up on this currently reading bookshelf uh, across the top, and any books that you have on hold will show up in this holds list. Uh, so really quickly, I'm going to go back to the Shelves tab, and we will go ahead and put a book on hold, and we'll also check out a book so we can take a look at that process. So if I was interested in reading Cold Sassy Tree by Olive Ann Burns, um, and I see that it's already checked out by another patron, but I think I'll go ahead and add it to my hold list because I'd still like to read it. Um, and then let's see if we can find one. We'll go down to one of these later shelves that might not have so many items checked out. Um, let's say we decide we would also like to check out the book A Raisin in the Sun. Um, so it has the big green checkout button, so I'll go ahead and click on that. Uh, and then I will check it out. This little window that just popped up will only really pop up in the PC app. Um, and basically what it's asking your patron is it's asking if they've ever purchased books from Amazon or if they use an OverDrive app as well. Uh, then they probably already have an Adobe ID. Uh, and to make sure that the, all the apps that they use to read ebooks on um, work on their device, they might, they probably want to provide that, that Adobe ID um, if they already have one. Uh, most of the time, your patron is just going to have the 3M Cloud Library automatically generate an ID for, for your. Uh, for you, uh, because that's the easiest way to do it, and it doesn't take any time. Once we click the Activate button, we'll go right back to downloading that book that we just checked out. Um, on all other devices, the device pretty much can tell, and the 3M Cloud Library app will find if there's an Adobe ID that's been used on your device before. Um, so that's why this box usually doesn't pop up. If it does pop up um, on any other device, it usually already knows what the Adobe ID is, and it will say, we found an Adobe ID, would you like to use that? Um, but for the most part, on 
other devices, I haven't seen this box pop up much at all uh, because the device is smart enough to know um, if you already use an Adobe ID. So for your patrons that use the PC app, most of the time, again, they'll just automatically generate the ID. So we'll go ahead and click Activate. And then you can see the book that we just checked out is currently downloading. Depending on your Wi-Fi connection, it usually happens within about 30 seconds. Sometimes it takes about a minute. Uh, you can see it's fully downloaded now because the cover is no longer gray or transparent um, and it's ready for me to read. You'll also notice that it says I have 14 days left to read this item. For now, the eRead Illinois Advisory Committee has created a max the max checkout period for any ebook within the 3M collection is two weeks or 14 days. After 14 days, this item will disappear off of my device. I do not have to check it in. It will just automatically expire, so there's no late fees with the 3M Cloud Library. Um, if it's available after it's expired and left my device and I still wasn't finished with it, I can check it out again right away. Uh, and I will get it again for two weeks or the 14 days. Um, if it has been checked out or if it's on a hold list for another patron, I would have to add myself to the hold list again and wait until it became available again. Also, just some other loan rules that the committee has decided on for now are that patrons can currently check out three ebooks at one time uh, and they can also place holds on three ebooks at one time. The idea is that that will probably get expanded to five once our collection grows a little bit more um, and circulation isn't as wild as it is now, now that it's new. Um, but for now, it's just three for each. You'll also notice on my hold list, um, something that's really nice about the 3M Cloud is any book that you put on hold, because a book is always due within 14 days and it automatically expires off of a device, you'll get an estimate of about how many days you're going to be waiting for that book based on how many patrons already have added themselves to the hold list, which is kind of nice to see and know just because you kind of know what kind of a wait you're in for. Um, so that's just kind of a neat feature as well. Um, so let's take a look at some of the reading features that are available once you check out an item in the 3M Cloud Library app. So we'll go ahead and open a Raisin in the Sun. Um, you can see it opens, it shows me the book cover, and now I have this little ebook tab. I can close the book at any time and I'll go back to my bookshelf. Um, on your device, usually you just flip through the pages uh, using a finger swipe. On the PC, there's little these arrows. Um, I'm just going to go to a page at the beginning. Okay. Uh, and then you can see in the upper right hand corner, depending on the device that you're on, it'll be in the upper right hand corner or in the top center, um, you'll see all of these little icons. This is a good time for me to mention as well that no matter which device you're helping a patron use uh, when it comes to the 3M Cloud Library app, it pretty much looks the same. So the app is going to look the same on the PC or very similar to on the PC as it does on the iPad, as it does on a Droid phone, as it does on a Nook. Um, there are a few things that are different, but it's very intuitive and very easy to navigate. Um, so if you know how to use the app on one device, you are going to know how to use it on another. So don't feel intimidated, even if it's a device that maybe you're not that familiar with. Once you get into the 3M Cloud Library app, it's pretty easy to find your way around um, if you've used it on any device. Uh, so you'll notice there's a little eye up here in italics. If we click on that feature, that just brings up that info page again, which gives us a lot of the information that we would find in the OPAC. Um, it's kind of neat. It's got this little similar books button that you can also click on, uh, and it pulled up a few books uh, either about Lorraine Hansberry um, or by her. Typically, it seems like the similar books usually pulls books by the same author, um, so there's just a little fun fact for you. You'll also see this little magnifying glass in the upper right hand corner. That actually allows you to search within the book. So if you're reading a novel and you're in chapter 7 and a character comes into play that was introduced way back in chapter 2 but you know nothing, you haven't heard anything about this character <laughs> since chapter 2, uh, you can type in that character's name and I just know that there is a character in the Raisin of the Sun named Travis. So, um, And it will tell you where that character is listed. 
Um, so then you can find, instead of having to flip through the book, you could go back to whatever page or whatever chapter uh, and reread that description if you needed to. So that's kind of a cool feature. It's always neat to be able to search within a book without actually having to flip through all those pages. Um, you'll also see up here there's a little A and a big A. Uh, on some devices this actually shows up as a little gear icon and then once you click it you'll be given the option of the big A or the little A. Um, this will allow your patron to make the font larger. So if you have a patron who needs large print, uh, they can make the font larger and they'll be able to read it or to make the font smaller. Um, so your patron can adjust the font uh, as much as their device will allow them to. Some devices will not let you get very big um, and some devices won't let you get very small. Um, especially if you're reading on a phone, sometimes the, the text will not get very big if you're trying to make it larger. Um, but that should make it very easy for your patron to read and kind of set the page to the format that they like to read on their device. And then you'll notice there's sort of this little very difficult to see white square. Uh, what that is, is 3M calls that a bookmark. And basically what that is, as you can see by this lovely 3M post-it, uh, is it's a way for you to annotate within the book. So I can write something on this page that maybe I want to remember uh, about this book, and I can save my bookmark. The next time that I come to this page, you'll notice that now my bookmark is yellow and it has writing on it, so I know that I have a, an annotation on this page uh, that I can open and look at. I can also click on the Info button up here uh, and click on this Bookmarks button, and any bookmarks that I've put in the book I'll see listed, so I can navigate through them that way. So, another really cool feature about the 3M Cloud Library app, because it authenticates with your library barcode, is that if this book expires before I'm finished with it, uh, and I notice it's disappeared off my shelf, and I go to check it out again, and it's available, when I check out the book, uh, the 3M Cloud Library app will ask me if I'd like to pick up where I left off, or if I'd like to sync to my last reading position. Which means that even though this book has been returned, and I'm checking it out again, uh, the book will open to whatever page was the last page I read before it just expired off of my device. So that's a really cool feature. And also, because it authenticates with your barcode, this bookmark will also still be within the book. So even if I check this book in, and then I check it out even a few weeks later, um, I can go through and look at the bookmarks that I placed within the book. A question that I get a lot about these little bookmarks, if you are someone who likes to annotate books, is if there's any way to email them to yourself or share them. Um, and there really isn't that we've found within the app so far. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if that's a feature that someday comes into the app. Um, but for now, it's just kind of for you to use if, if you like to use that feature. Some of your patrons may never use any of these features, and some of your patrons will love them. Um, so it's just good to know that they're there. So if you have a patron ask, you can you can say, or if you have a patron who maybe can't read the smaller text, you can say, oh, if you if you just do this, you'll be able to read it easier. Um, so I'm going to go back to my bookshelf. Um, that's pretty much everything that there is to know about the 3M Cloud Library app. Like I said, it's really easy to use. Um, and your patrons really shouldn't have a lot of, it's all patron driven. So once your patron knows how to use it, you should not get very many questions about, about how to do it. Uh, because your patron can look at all the items within the collection through the app and can check out books directly from the app on their device. Um, so does anybody have any questions just about the app in general before we move on and take a look at the ebooks in our OPAC? Um, and Denise had asked earlier, is there a limit to the numbers put on hold by a patron? So yes, that, I think I answered it. Um, but patrons can put three holds, they can have th three ebooks on hold, and they can check out three ebooks at one time. Again, and hopefully that will get expanded to five, uh, but the advisory committee thought it was probably better to start small and then give patrons more days, as opposed to starting big and then taking days away from patrons. <laughs> um, uh, and then does anybody else have any questions just about the app in general?
It doesn't look like I see anybody typing. If you do have questions, feel free to go ahead and enter them into the chat at any time. Um, really quickly, let's go ahead and take a look at the books in the OPAC. So I'm just going to go where I go to check out books from the Edwardsville office. Um, let that load really quickly. This is probably pretty similar to what your OPAC looks like. You might have different colors or different messages at the top, and yours, of course, will say whatever library uh, you search books from. This is just where I come to look for books when I check books out from our collection. Um, one of the first things that's really cool about the 3M app and the 3M Cloud Library integrating seamlessly with Polaris is that it's really easy to find the 3M eBooks in the OPAC. Um, if you're curious and you wanted to look at all of the 3M eBooks that we currently have in the shared collection, you can just do a keyword search for 3M and then limit your format to eBook. And you'll be given a list of all of the eBooks that we have currently within the collection. You can see that right now we're at 3,826. Um, we're currently buying items for the collection twice a week, so that number continues to grow and will continue to get bigger uh, as the collection grows and as more libraries sign up to participate. Um, so I think that within the first six or seven months, we'll probably have up to 10,000 items within the collection, just like Overdrive does. The other thing that's neat about this keyword search is you can also search for books within 3M on particular subjects. Uh, within the OPAC. So if I wanted to know what 3M eBooks we have about Disney, um, all I need to do is type in 3M and Disney, and then again, limit by eBook. And I get a list of all of the books that we have in the 3M Cloud Library uh, about Disney, which is kind of neat. Um, and I think you can also do that with author. So if we do 3M Grisham, we'll get a book, a list of books in the 3M Cloud Library by John Grisham. So it's really neat uh, that you can kind of search that way uh, for your patrons if they're already at the library using the OPAC or if they use the OPAC a lot and they're maybe not near their device, uh, they can access the 3M eBooks through the OPAC just like they would on their device, uh, just like they would through the app. Now you'll notice that all of these books that are listed right now, it says place hold, it doesn't say check out. So it seems like none of them are available. Uh, that is because I have not logged into my library account yet. Your patron must be logged into you, their account before they'll be able to check out 3M eBooks. Um, if I come and I notice this, I'm probably going to find a book that I would want to check out anyways, and I'm going to go ahead and say, oh, sure, place hold. And then I will get a message that tells me that I do need to log into my account before I'm able to do that. Um, so we'll go ahead and log in with the same account that we used on our PC app. Um, and you can see now that that one I had selected, I do need to place a hold on it because it's already checked out, uh, but the one right below it is available for me to check out. Your patrons also, if they just come across 3M eBooks in the collection, if they're doing a different search and they, and they come across one, it should be pretty easy for them to tell that it is an eBook uh, because it will say electronic resource right in the title, and then it has this great little 3M Cloud Library icon right next to the little eBook icon. Um, so it's pretty easy to tell as you're going through the OPAC which items are 3M Cloud Library eBooks. Just like in the app, if I'm in the OPAC and I'm searching and I come across a book that I would like to check out, uh, I can check it out right from the OPAC. So we'll go ahead and check out this John Grisham book. The ebook has already been checked out for me. Uh, and so if I go, you'll notice the checkout button disappeared because I already have it checked out. If I go and look at my item list on my account, You'll see, oh, and it might be taking a minute to sync up with the Wi-Fi here because it's only showing the one that we checked out via the app. Um, and that, again, that's probably just because my Wi-Fi connection might not be updating as quickly or Polaris might not have updated quickly as quickly. Typically, when you check out an ebook um, immediately, 
uh, you'll find it in your patron record. And you can see that the book that we checked out on the app is listed there as well as the one that we placed on hold. Um, I'm going to go back and search one more book and just see if we can make it show us the book that we just checked out because it's not a fun party trick if it doesn't do it right away like it normally does. Um, so we'll check out this dreams book. Sure. Right. Um, Oh, that time it updated that one. So maybe something happened with our John Grisham book. We'll see if it shows up in our app. Uh, but you can see the book that I just checked out, The Dreams 1, 2, 3, shows up uh, in my list. Again, you, when your patron is looking at their patron record, they'll see all of the items they have checked out. But they'll be able to tell which ones are 3M Cloud Library eBooks because it'll have that little 3M icon. And it also says Electronic Resource in the title. Your patron can check in ebooks early, either from the app or from the OPAC. So even though the loan period is 14 days or the max loan period is 14 days, your patron is not stuck with that book if they finish it within three. Um, they are able to check it in and then that book will immediately become available for the next patron on the hold list or become available to check out. So I'm going to go ahead and check in this Raisin in a Sun that we just checked out on the app a few minutes ago so we can take a look at that. Go ahead and check that in now. My ebook has been successfully checked in. Uh, so it disappeared off of my item list. Um, and just to show what we did in that OPAC, we'll also show up if I'm at the library in the afternoon and then I'm reading at home after dinner on my device. It will also show up on my app. We will go back to the 3M Cloud Library app. I'm actually going to close it and just log in again so that we'll sync up uh, with our wireless connection um, and I can go to my bookshelf oh and there's our John Grisham book you can see that the raisin in a sun book that I was reading because I checked it in early has disappeared uh, and the two books that I just checked out from the OPAC are already there they downloaded super quickly and I can open them right up and start reading them uh, in the app to check in a book early. Uh, it depends on the device. Sometimes there's just a little red check-in button up here that you can click on and then you can select each book that you'd like to check in. Uh, on mo other devices, uh, you have to click on this list view button and then you will see a check-in button right next to the book. Or if you click on the title, you'll get that check-in button uh, somewhere on that info page. So we'll go ahead and just check in these items so that they're available for someone else to check out. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and also just remove this cold sassy tree book that we placed on hold. I'm going to go ahead and remove that from my hold list. Um, and that's pretty much everything that you need to know about the 3M eBooks in the OPAC. Uh, pretty much anything you can do in the OPAC you can also do in the 3M Cloud Library app and vice versa. Um, yeah, it looks like Polaris is just a little slow to connect with what we just did in the app. Because um, now it's showing both of our items to check out. Typically when I do this, it disappears right away. So probably within five or ten minutes if I were to log out and log back in, all of those things would be off of my record because we just checked them in and removed them from our hold list. Um, so... At this time, I'd like to go ahead and tell you to go ahead and start putting any questions um, that you have in chat about ebooks in the OPAC or just in general. Um, and while you are typing in your questions, I did mention that we have a lot of promotional materials available for you to use within the library, for you to print, for you to hand out to patrons, uh, available on the IHLS website. So I just wanted to show you where those are. Uh, if you're on the IHLS website uh, and you go to IHLS members, you'll see listed right at the bottom there, uh, eReed Illinois, and that will take you to our eReed Illinois page. Um, there's just some general information about the grant, and then we have a whole list of materials that you may find useful. Uh, some of them are customizable so that you can put your own library logo on them um, and use them as you wish. We have no problem with that. Um, 
there's just important information, there's some great training information, and then there's useful links that you might, um, the State Library of Kansas 3M Cloud Library FAC has a lot of great information. If you get a stumper question from a patron, this is a great place to go. Because um, they've had the 3M Cloud Library for a few years and they've developed a really nice fact that hopefully we can steal from when we have our eRead Illinois website. And you can also find uh, copies of our old newsletters that we're sending out once per week. Uh, so that's where you'll find that listed. Um, so, again, feel free to put any questions that you might have in the chat. Uh, I'm going to stop sharing my screen because we've taken a look at the 3M Cloud Library app um, as much as we're going to. Oh, that looks like... Alyssa asks, where do we find the icon for the app? Um, I have a feeling you might have asked that question earlier, Alyssa, and I didn't see it. Um, but the icon for the app, once you download it to your device, will show up wherever your apps are downloaded. So once you've downloaded and installed it on your device, it should just show up on your home page. Is that what you were referring to? You are welcome. Alyssa says, yes, thanks. Um, and it looks like Denise is typing, so we'll hold on a second for her question. Ah, Alyssa's question, actually, Alyssa had just chatted it. There's a way that you can chat just to presenters, so it had chatted just to me. Um, so that's why you didn't see it typed there. Sorry, I should have clarified that no one else could see it. Uh, she was just asking where the icon for the 3M Cloud Library was located. Um, so once it's downloaded and installed, it's wherever apps are listed on your device, typically on the home page. That's why it's on the desktop of my PC. Um, and feel free to type any other questions that you may have into chat. Uh, that's kind of the end of our basic tour of 3M. So if you need to get back to the CERC desk or you need to get back out into the library, that's fine. Feel free to uh, exit the meeting room. Uh, of course, I'll be here until noon at the top of the hour to answer any questions that you have. Uh, thank you so much for coming and enjoy the rest of your day. And you are all very welcome.